everyone. This tutorial is going to walk you through the basics of setting up a portfolio, a program, and a project in Adobe Workfront. So first, you're going to want to navigate to Portfolios, which you can do so through the main menu here, Portfolios. You'll simply click New Portfolio, um, and you can title this, of course, whatever is relevant. I'm going to call this 123 Corp. So it's automatically set up um, with you as the owner. And when you go to the portfolio details here, uh, it will automatically make you um, the manager if you're entering the portfolio. Uh, you can add a group to be associated with it if you have uh, certain groups set up in the system. And then, of course, you can add a description as well if you prefer, but none of these are required. All right, and within the portfolio that you just set up, you can add a program if you like. Um, say you're adding it for this year. You can also pull in an existing program if uh, for some reason you had a program set up, but you forgot to do the portfolio, you can always search and add it. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to add a new program from scratch. So we'll call this one, two, three, four, 2023, let's say for the year. And then the program details, same thing. Uh, whoever is entering the program will automatically be the program manager. And uh, you can associate a group with the program and you can also add a description if preferred. And then you can add a new project uh, from within the portfolio and program, which you just set up to make it easier. It'll already, already be housed where it's supposed to be. Uh, so for this tutorial, we're going to just do a new project in terms of basic setup um, versus some of these other options. So you can add a new project. this the same thing. Work. And then if you take a look at the project details when you start a project from scratch here, again you can add a description here if you want to. These other sections as you scroll down uh, the project dates and the schedule mode refers to um, the tasks that you're going to be entering. So if you have tasks that you know will uh, or are unsure of what date they'll go till, it's usually best to schedule from the start date. That way you won't be limited uh, with what your end plan due dates can be. Um, if you know you have project that say needs to be completed by 12-31-23, there's no, um, no leeway there. You can do the schedule mode from the completion date. Um, and so I'll put that as December. So that way, if someone tries to add a task in to this project where the planned completion date is, is later than 12-31, it actually won't allow them to schedule it. So again, if you have a, a finite date and you won't be able to go past that, you'll want to schedule it from the completion date. Uh, if you have a bit more leeway on your timelines, I would suggest scheduling it from the start date. Okay. Um, the project owner will default to your profile if you're entering it. Uh, you can always reassign that though if needed. Uh, you can add in resource manager, project sponsor, um, and any of these fields if it's applicable uh, to what you are, are working on. Um, the project association over here to the right, since we went through and added it within that program and portfolio, those fields will already be completed. What you also want to make sure you add is the company name. So depending on how you're using Workfront if you're managing, you know, external client work uh, 
or whether it's for different departments within your company, if you're only using this platform internally, you can set up different companies uh, to help keep you organized within the system. And so only work for admins can add companies and you can do that by going to setup, open this in a new tab, and going to the companies tab here. And so you'll just click new company. And so we'll name it 123 Corp. Is active. You want to make sure that that is selected as well. And these are the only two required fields. Um, you do not want to check anything as the primary company that isn't the company that you're working for that owns this instance of Workfront. Um, again, you can associate a group with the company or even uh, separate members or custom form if you're utilizing that uh, for companies. Uh, but in terms of basic info that's needed, it's just the name and is active. And you can create company and you'll see it right there. So then you can go back to your project here and in the company, you can now search and add 123 Corp as the company. I recommend having that field completed in terms of reporting and things you may want to use in the system later. Uh, it's best to have it organized and have your portfolio program and company all set up. The group will default to whatever the project owner's home group is. Uh, again, this can be changed, uh, but typically what will happen is when you create the project, the group will automatically be added as the project owner's home group. That is all of the required information. Uh, there is a finance piece where you can use um, budget metrics um, and revenue. Uh, that's a bit more in depth. So we're only focusing on basic setup today, but those are options to, to add within your project. So once you have all that completed, you can hit save. And then you can go to the tasks tab and begin adding tasks. Uh, you can keep things, you can keep the project in planning mode, add all of your tasks and assignments so no one's getting notifications yet or seeing that work until you're ready to make it live. Um, and you do that by flipping it to current. Or you can schedule everything while it's in current mode and a sign out and those users will receive email notifications that they've been assigned to work uh, when it's in current mode. And those are the basic steps to add a portfolio program and project in Adobe Workfront.